goddesses and welcome to our manifest your magic moon circle we are manifesting our magic this full moon wait let me straighten the boobies <laughs> i put the microphone on and we got dislodged <laughs> we are tonight it is a full moon and the planet venus is in retrograde and I thought that it was the perfect energy for us to have an ancestral release circle, the perfect energy. Also, because in the timing of um, my schedule, we are currently about to, I'm about to open the doors and invite in a new group of spiritpreneurs into the Spiritpreneur Guru Academy. And when we have ancestral ties and ancestral issues that are not allowing us to stretch and grow, we then are afraid to be seen, afraid to show up, afraid to put our voices into the world. And so that's why I thought that it was the perfect energy for an ancestral clearing. I'm trying to, let me see if there's a way that I can see your comments. Yay, I see Goddess Marae is here, who was a part of my Manifest Your Magic Moon Circles when I used to do them last year, and I'm so glad that she is here. Goddesses, let me know if you can see the polls, the questions that are there. What do you most release, wish to release this full moon? Have you ever attended or led a full moon circle or a moon circle period? And have you experienced a primal rejection or abandonment? Ah, oh, man, I cannot see your comments. Let me see. There must be a way. Maybe I'll have to access it on my phone. Oh, I think it's because of the polls. Oh. Let me see. Yay. If I close the polls, there, I can see it. Hello, Goddess Nashira. Yay. She said, I caught you live. Yes, you did, my love. All right, good. Okay, so Goddess Nashira and all of the other goddesses who are gathering, come to the front of the room. Come to the front of the room. We are tonight doing an ancestral clearing. I have fun hair. This is a blue wig. I'm experimenting with color, and I don't want to put any color um in my hair so i got fun blue hair for the full moon <laughs> for once in a blue moon blue moon energy and so goddess nishira since this is your first time catching a live uh circle pick a number between one and eleven and let's pull a card actually i was wanting to thinking we were going to pull from the african goddess affirmation cards but then i just heard a download that we're pulling from the one manifesting deck so goddess nashira please give me a number between one and eleven she says fear of the next level i wish to release well you are in the right place goddesses and what i asked you to bring to the circle was two things Okay, so number one, I asked you to bring a sacred object from a family member, an ancestor, um, something that you feel connected to. It could be an ancestor by blood or an ancestor that you are claiming. And the second thing I asked you to bring to the circle is something, a gift, right? A gift wrapped in strange wrapping paper, a gift that you wish to release, that you have inherited um downloaded from your ancestors you know like it could be something like um it could be an addiction it could be anger it could be a sadness it could be something like that um but we're gonna view it as a gift because everything is a gift right and a gift that you are wishing to release all right so let's see so goddess nashira oh nate she gave me a, a pronunciation guide yes thank you goddess Na Shira. Okay, tell me if I have it right. I am all for pronunciation guide. Yesterday I was on a radio show and they were laughing before we got on because in the um, the bio that my peeps sent over to them, it was like Abby Ola A Brums Wa manifesting, like manifesting, but wa manifesting spirit preneur. Yes, spell it all out. Goddess Na Shira. Okay, all right, so we're gonna pull number seven. Number seven, number seven, number seven. Okay, let me just arrange the cards, which are kind of janky. Okay, so I'm gonna just do a shuffle for clearing first and then do a shuffle for seven. So let's just put our intention, our energy on 
letting go on our beautiful ancestors, those who came before us, um, those who took care of us the best that they could, whether they are still here or they've moved on. Let's put our energy and our intention on gratitude for them and the journey that they have walked and gratitude for us and our capacity now to continue our journey on our own without feeling bound to prior obligations, prior connections, okay? Okay, one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven, okay. Oh, Goddess Nashira, yes, my love. She pulled Mommy Wata. Oh my goodness, and I didn't even, <laughs> Mom, the Mommy Wata, I didn't even remember that Mommy Wata um, on this card, she has blue in her hair. Can you see that? She has blue in her hair, and tonight I've got the blue hair going on. So Mami Wata is an African diaspora goddess known throughout the Caribbean, throughout South America. Um, she takes many different forms. And this card is about oneness. Can you see that? It is the card of oneness. We are all in this together. In this physical universe, in this physical realm, there is duality, right? White, black, short, tall, um, skinny, fat, you know, we want everything to be split. But in the spiritual realm, which is where we are all from, we are spiritual beings having a human experience, there is oneness. And when we tune in to the energy, of oneness, we are most powerful. How amazing is that? This is also a gestation card, if you can see that. Um, um. And why PD, <laughs> something's going on outside, but that's okay, because we are focused here. It is a gestation card, because this is a fertility deck, and it goes by um, the stages of fertility. And, Gestation means that you, Goddess Nashaira, and all of us goddesses in this beautiful circle are right now gestating, right now cooking up something, right now have something amazing that we are about to birth into the world. How incredible is that? And the affirmation is, I am divinely connected to the source of all that is. Let's affirm that. I am divinely connected to the source of all that is. I am divinely connected, yes, to the source of all that is. So let's begin with some gratitude and then get into our full moon circle. So creator, divine, most high, mother, father, God, thank you so much for blessing us with this sacred sisterhood. Allow us to feel the energy right now as we are stretched across the globe in oneness, in gratitude, in belief, in power, and in faith to be connected to each other, to be connected to the source of all that is. Allow us to, to let all that is not for us to fall away. Give us the strength and the power to release what is not for us. If it is for us, we ask you to bless it. If it is not for us, we ask you to block it. I ask you to guide my words, to guide my actions. What would you have me say? What would you have me do? Where would you have me go? Here we are. And for this, we are so very grateful. Amen, Ashe, and so it is. And so it is, goddesses. Yes, goddess Shanita is here. Goddess Aurora is here. Yes, the goddesses are here. Beautiful, hello, goddess Candace. Goddess, okay, goddess Anne says, it is also her first time. Can she get a card, please? I love that. You're asking for what you want. So you know what? <laughs> yes, yes, I will pull a card for you.
you goddess and but i will say this the cards that are pulled are not only for the specific goddess who's pulling it, but all of us who are here together. Because right now I want you all to imagine that we are a circle. We are a circle, no matter where you are right now. I believe Goddess Moray, for example, she is in Paris and Goddess I think I saw goddess Keisha, she is in the UK. We are global goddesses. I am in New York City, as we heard with the sirens. <laughs> we are globally stretched around this planet and we are in this together. And if it's true for one, it's true for all. And so the accomplishments of one, the accomplishments of any one of us are a light and a beacon to mean that yes, you goddess Anne, yes, you goddess Candace, we are in it together and it's a reflection of your own shine, okay? A reflection of your own shine. Okay, so goddess Anne, give me a number, my love, between one and 11, please. Goddess Ifetayo says she's in Tennessee, oh wow. Well, there's an amazing dance space in Brooklyn named Ifetayo that you should come and declare and be like, yes, here I am. I say goddess Merva. Okay. So a number between one and eleven. And for those of you who are new to a full moon circle, let me just share with you uh, what we do on a full moon circle. So the full moon is about releasing about letting go of what is not working in our lives. The new moon is about calling in the things that we want, calling in and allowing in our blessings. And these two things, right? Releasing and receiving, letting go and allowing are what complete the circle of life. And so you can't have a one-sided thing, you know, for example, you know, the goddesses who are have issues around charging, for example, for their work, right? You are giving and then afraid of receiving. Or the goddesses who just give, give, give to people in their lives but have challenges with asking. That's why I honored the sister who asked just now issues with asking for what you want, issues with throat chakra issues, with speaking out, speaking about what it is that you know you came to share. And this is a really, really important time for all of us. If you are here in this circle and you have manifested me and I've manifested you, I want you to know that it is really important. Your gifts are needed. And so someone, for example, she said to me, she was like, you know, um, she is wanting to create a hair and beauty blog, a natural hair and beauty blog. And she was like, you know, Abiola, when you talk about the importance of us doing our work and putting ourselves out there, I feel like, well, I'm wanting to create an, a, a beauty blog, you know, that seems so small. Am I also a spiritpreneur? And I said, absolutely, yes, because the power is in your intention and beauty can be transformational. I had fun tonight getting all adorned with my blue wig and, you know, <laughs> flowers and coming together for the circle. And so there's no part of it that is small. It is your intention. And if you're here, you have a sacred intention and it's time for you. It is your time to put your magic, your mission, your mojo into the world. All right, so goddess Anne pulled a number seven. Okay, all right. All right, so let's put our intention on the power of asking for what you want, which Goddess Anne did. What is that power? The power of giving yourself permission, permission to know what you want and to request what you want and to let go of what you don't want. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay. So the card that Goddess Anne pulled for us is really powerful for right now. It is Goddess Juno, and it is the card of vulnerability. Vulnerability, the vulnerability to ask, the vulnerability to come with your arms open and say, here I am. The vulnerability to express our emotions. The moon is about emotions, you know, it's uh, emotional energy. That's why back in the days they used to say, you know, 
there were lunatics, lunar, meaning the moon, and that there were more crimes uh, that happened during the full moon because everyone was stirred up in their emotions. It's a great time to do something creative as well. And so the affirmation is, I am strong enough to open my heart, be myself, and express my raw emotions. I am strong enough to open my heart, be myself, and express my raw emotions. And this card, as you can see, is a birth card. So these two cards work really well together because here we have the gestation, right? When we are dreaming up our programs, our products, our services, our magic, our things that we want to share, and then being vulnerable enough to lead, being vulnerable enough to put yourself out there, being vulnerable enough to say, this is what I want to do in the world and how I want to do it. Oh, beautiful. Goddess Annis in Trinidad. Yes, we truly are global goddesses. Yes, my Trini sister. I'm so glad that you are here. Yes, Goddess Aurora says, good luck. Today is definitely my day. Oh my goodness, Goddess Candice said, that car touched my soul, synchronicity. Yeah, it touched my soul as well. It touched my soul as well. And it is so perfect with vulnerability, with what I wanted to share with you today about primal rejection. So I started to use this term. This term came to me, primal rejection, when I was exploring with when I was in London um, and I was working with a group of men and women at the College of Psychic Studies and we were doing exercises on putting your putting yourself out there, speaking up, throat chakra, a lot of voice stuff. And when we started to dig back as to why people were afraid to speak their truth or put themselves out there, it all went back to primal wounds, wounds of abandonment, or wounds, fear of rejection, and then fear of rejection based on that abandonment. And I started to look at it really as, you know, a lot of us, me included, having challenges and fears based on those primal rejections. So the way that I define a primal rejection is a, an abandonment or rejection by a parent or primary caregiver when you are, were at a formative age. And it could be a rejection that you perceived as a rejection, whether they intended it or not. You know, so for example, a death is an unintended abandonment because the parent or primary caregiver left not of their will, but to you in your formative life, there you were feeling this primal abandonment, right? Or it could be a primal rejection. So for example, you know, my father, I love my father. I consider him one of my friends now. I adore him. I'm definitely a daddy's girl. But him having, you know, turbulent relationship with my mother most of my life and, you know, all of those kinds of things, for me, during my formative years, registered as rejection. You cannot reject the mother without rejecting the child. And if you are elsewhere, you know, that registers as a primal rejection. And for us as human beings, all of us, every single human being who is in a healthy state of mind is on a quest for love, for, you know, to, to bring more love, to be more loving, to have more love. And it shows up for a lot of us in funny and, you know, strange kinds of ways. But we want to be loved, especially by those who, you know, we deemed to be our, who are uh, our primary caregivers. And when we feel like for whatever reason we were rejected, or we feel like for whatever reason we were abandoned, then we feel on a level that we, eat, we have to figure out a way to get that love, which is often squashing ourselves down or playing small or not speaking out 
or being presentable or being acceptable or being as nice as you can or being as good as you can or in some families being as bitchy and mean as you can you know it reg it, it shows up in different ways for us you know depending on what your experience is and you know the beautiful thing is that we now get to reparent ourselves and we get to lovingly release those who came before because we know that you know our primary care caregivers or our parents they inherited it from somewhere and they inherited it from somewhere and it goes back and back and back and then now it shows up in your life when you are wanted on a stage and you can't get your voice out there or you have an idea for a book and you feel scared to write it or you are undercharging yourself or underserving or whatever it is because you're afraid that you will stumble and be unlovable and so we want to clear that energy and we want to clear it again with love coming from a place of love and compassion for whoever came before but at the same time knowing we're not obligated to stay stuck in their patterns we're not obligated to live out their pathology in order to be um faithful to them it is not a form of betrayal for you to shine as brightly as you can let's affirm that it is not a form of betrayal for me to shine as brightly as I can. I betray no one by speaking my truth. It is not a form of betrayal for me to shine as brightly as I can. And remembering what this card said, I am divinely connected to the source of all that is. And as this card said, I am strong enough to open my heart, be myself, and express my raw emotions. I am strong enough to open my heart, be myself, and express my raw emotions. And so let's start with thinking about something that you would like to let go of. What is it that you are wanting to release this full moon and I have some polls that are there let me know if you can see the polls actually oh it says publish now oh well there you go okay yes all right <laughs> all right let me publish this one uh, here we go publish now okay let's go with this what do you wish to most release right now is it a person is it an emotion is it a fear or is it a behavior? Is it a person that you wanna release? You know, maybe you feel connected to a, an ex, an ex relationship, or you're bound up in a relationship with, you know, um, a parent or a teacher or something that happened to you when you were younger. Or maybe it's a behavior an addiction, um, you know, an addiction could be to alcohol, it could be to TV, it could be to the internet, it could be to, a to food, it could be to anger. Is it an emotion? Is it the feeling of self-doubt or the feeling of feeling less than or the feeling of feeling like you are not enough? Ah, oh, I feel that one really powerfully. The feeling of you are not enough. And all of these really are interconnected. And although I have fear as something totally separate by itself, these all are different faces and different forms of fear. And so is the fear for you showing up as a behavior, as a clear fear, as an emotion or as a person? And so in our poll so far of everybody who took it so far, we have 44% want to release a behavior, 44% want to release a fear, and 11% want to release an emotion. Okay, all right, so let's get clear about what the fear is that you are wanting to release or the behavior. So let me know and 
let me know in the comments if what the fear or behavior is that you are wanting to release. And I know it can be scary to speak on it. I know it can be scary to put ourselves out there in that way. But what did we, what did we affirm? What did we begin with? Let me figure out how to close this poll now. <laughs> Let's see. All right, here we go. What did we begin with? We started with vulnerability, the vulnerability card. I am strong enough to open my heart, be myself, and express my raw emotions. So what is it, what fear, what behavior are you wanting to let go of in your life? Okay, so Goddess Tiffany says, my eating habits. Uh, I'm, I'm working on that, on freeing myself and clearing that as well, Goddess Tiffany. And I will tell you an, an, an amazing story, Goddess Tiffany, that happened today. Uh, talk about gifts in strange wrapping paper. So I was wanting to, I this afternoon I, I had a thing with UPS. I was home, they rang the bell, and I wasn't here, and they're doing something new where they take your package to somewhere else. So I was in, like, drop it off at, like, a drop-off spot. So I was heated. I was upset. I was like, okay, you know, um, I told my assistant, call UPS, lodge a complaint. I was, like, through the roof that, you know, I had to leave during the day to go and get this package and, you know, blah, 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 blah. So here's the magical thing that happened. The reason I was upset at leaving is that for me, when I before I do a circle like this, I need to spend time in meditation and you know, uh, preparing spiritually. I, I smudge myself, I clear myself, I clear the energy to be able to hold space and hold energy. And so I wouldn't have gone out to the store except that I went to UPS. And so I saw the store and as Goddess Tiffany, you know, we have in common that our eating habits are something that we are actively freeing ourselves and, and shifting in our lives. And so I started to go into the store for, I thought I was going into the store to buy some Tostitos, right? And so I'm going into the store, still heated about UPS, walking in to buy some Tostitos. However, when I got into the store, there were two lines that were going. It's New York City, Manhattan, midday. Everything is chaotic. Um, I asked a woman behind the counter who was standing there, I said, um, are you open? And she said, well, no, I'm not open. But she said, eh, come on. You know, I, she said, I'm a manager. I'm not open, but I'll take you. Come on. So I came on and she looked at me and she says, you just reminded me today that God is good. And I said, oh, I'm glad I reminded you of that. She said, yes. She said, you know what? She said, sis, God is good even when you're going through something. And I looked up and I looked at her eyes and I asked her, I said, are you going through something? And she took a deep breath and she said, yes. She said, yes. She said, I'm having all of these issues with my mother. And she started to share exactly what we're talking about here, issues of primal rejection and abandonment that she's having with her mother. She asked me, she was like, and, and, and she, she said, I don't know why, but I feel the need to just share this with you. She rang me up and then we went to the side to talk, much to the anger of all of the people in New York City who are standing there, but we had such a powerful moment. And I said, can we, do you mind if we pray together about it? And this none of this would have happened if I wasn't following the, the calling that I thought, which was the calling of snacks, <laughs> which I'm wishing to release. And it turned out to be the calling to help this sister with the intention of ancestral clearing and dealing with our primal rejection issues and abandonment issues since I had set that as the intention for the day. So I was disgruntled at not feeling like I was having the time to prepare, but you know, the energy, the creator, the universe found a different way for me to be in service and preparation. And so these things that we're wanting to release, I'm inviting us to be able to transmute them, to shift the energy, to know that they are gifts wrapped in strange wrapping paper and that we can shift the energy, we can release it and change that energy into something else. You know, when most of us were growing up, they thought that DNA was fixed. 
now science is catching up with spirituality and there's something called epigenetics that they're learning that we can shift our DNA. And so if we can shift our DNA, then we can shift our mindsets. If we can shift our mindsets, then we can welcome in miracles. Miracles can happen where we can tonight cleanse and release these patterns, these emotions, these fears that are holding us back. We don't have to carry these burdens anymore. We don't have to believe that we're equating love with food or love with you know money or love with lack of money or righteousness with poverty, or whatever it is. And tonight, I am welcoming in, I'm calling on the energy of a miracle. Who's ready for a miracle tonight? Let's call in the energy of a miracle and of releasing that which does not serve us. Yes, Goddess Shanita, Goddess Candace said, such a beautiful blessing for you and for her. Yes, it was amazing. I was there in Rite Aid crying <laughs> on an after, on a, what's today, Wednesday afternoon. Yes, Goddess Monet, and, and I, I invited her to our circle but she was saying, she was like, well, I don't know, I'm not on Facebook, I'm not on social media, I don't know how to use any of it. So I took her number and I told her I will text it to her afterward. And so let's give our energy right now, our clearing energy. Let's hold our hands up. And as we are a circle, and we are all in this together. And if it is true for one, it is true for all. Let's focus on Goddess Sharon. That was her name. And let us share our energy, healing energy of love with Goddess Sharon. Let's beam our energy toward her and her relationship with her mother. Let's see her feeling whole. Let's see her feeling happy. Let's see her feeling healed. Amen, Ashe, and so it is. We are calling in miracles tonight and we are going to release all that is not working for us. So Goddess Allison says, emotional eating and overthinking when the answer is right in front of me or within me. Overthinking, yes. Absolutely. Goddess Aurora Day says, fear of living alone. Oh, that's a big one. Goddess Allison, this is something that you've been working with. She says, children are grown now and I have to figure out what I'd like to do and where I'd like to go. Oh my goodness. Goddess Allison, you should offer one of your free sessions to Goddess Aurora. Um, I think that that would be a beautiful and magical confession, a uh, magical connection. Thank you so much, Goddess Aurora, for having the vulnerability to share that with us. We're going to do some clearing around that in a bit. Um, Goddess Anne says there is an emotion. Goddess Zania says anxiety yes sis anxiety she is wanting to release and so right now i want us to think about oh goddess zania says affirming the energy of miracles yes we're calling on a miracle we are calling on a miracle to let go if it is for us bless it if it is not for us block it if it is for us Bless it. Let's let's affirm that. Put that in the comments. If it is for me, bless it. If it is not for me, block it. If it is for me, bless it. If it is not for me, block it. If it is for me, bless it. If it is not for me, block it. And I think that it's really important that we're sharing this because we can feel like we are dealing with these things by ourselves. But we're not, you know, we are all in it together as we can see, you know, anxiety, fear of being alone, you know, um, fear of not having fear of uh, fear, fear period of putting yourself out there. You know, we have we're all in this together. Yes. If it is for me, bless it. 
Goddess Candace affirms, if it is not for me, block it. Dr. Tamara affirms, yes, Goddess, if it is for me, bless it. If it is not for me, block it. Yes, Goddess Ifetayo says, same as Goddess Aurora, asking for clarity and next steps and the courage to move forward. Okay, so we are asking for clarity for next steps and the courage to move forward. And so I want you to imagine in your mind's eye, whatever it is you are wanting to release, the fear, because it's all fear wrapped in different wrapping paper, right? It's all fear. These are all different forms of fear. I want you to imagine that fear in front of you. If it was a person, if it was a beast, if it was an animal, if it was, you know, um, whatever it is that you envision the fear as in your mind's eye, you know, it could look like, you know, dark clouds. It could look like, you know, just a ball of confusion. It could look like it's personified in a person, whatever it is. I want you to see it in front of you. I want you to see this fear in front of you. And don't worry. I know that this can be a very scary meditation to do, but you are, you are so, so very much protected. We are so very much loved. You are so very much blessed that it is okay. It is safe and it is safe to be safe. It is safe and it is safe to be safe. And so I want you to see this fear this anxiety, this challenge, these issues, all bundled up in whatever representation in front of you. And if it feels emotionally charged for you, it's because there is a connection. I want you now to imagine whatever the connection is between you and this fear, you and this person, you and this energy, you and this whatever it is that you are not wanting, this anxiety, this emotional eating, this whatever it is. See it however it is connected to you. And now I want you to see on the other side of this fear, it being connected to people in your bloodline. Maybe people you know, you know, like for example, I'm, I have anger that I'm wanting to release that is very connected to people that I know. But it could also be connected to people that you've never met, people who came before you, your ancestors, your primary caregivers, whoever they are, your bloodline. If you are adopted or fostered and don't know the people that you are connected to, it is okay. It is all right. It is safe and it is safe to be safe because we have ancestors that we are blood related to, we have ancestors that we are spirit and heart related to. On the other side of this fear, this energy is, are your ancestors, are those who came before you. And you're all connected, you're all connected to this fear, to this challenge, to this issue, to this problem. And now I want you in your mind's eye to connect to the energy of love, the healing and sacred energy of love. If it's hard for you to see, you can imagine a baby, a baby that you know, or a pet, or a child, and imagine that healing energy of love. And as this energy of love fills your heart, your spirit, your soul, it's connected to you through your root chakra, which is down at your tailbone and shoots all the way down to the center of the earth and shoots up through your crown chakra, the top of your head, your crown chakra, which connects you to all of the energy of creation, the energy, the sacred energy, the creative energy of the Most High. And I want you to feel this energy of love that is so powerful that it is dissolving the energy 
of the fear. I want you to beam now. You have the power. You are in charge. I want you to beam this energy of love toward the fear. I want you to beam the energy of love. Feel it filling you. You won't run out. It is eternal. It is infinite. The infinite and blessed energy of love, of source energy universal, flowing through your body, flowing through your veins, flowing through your arteries, flowing through your DNA from the beginning of time, from a primal place. See that beautiful healing energy of love, feel it. You probably feel like your body is heating up. Feel that beautiful energy of love and I want you to beam it toward the fear. If it is for me, bless it. If it is not for me, block it. Ble beam that energy of love toward the fear as it dissolves the connection between you and between this fear. As it dissolves the connection, any bonds that are held between you and the fear, any bonds that are held between the fear and those who came before you. As we heal ourselves, we heal those who came before. As we heal ourselves, we heal those who come after. And I want you to just feel that energy of love welling up, overflowing, overflowing. As you give that energy, as you release that fear within you, as you release that bond, that connection to that fear, see it, see it dissolving, see it shrinking now. As you grow larger, as you grow brighter, see that fear in front of you getting smaller and smaller and smaller. See it shrinking, see it falling away. If it is for you, bless it. If it is not for you, block it. See that fear shrinking. See your connection to it shrinking. See your attachment to it shrinking. And now it's a little small pebble and see it getting smaller and smaller, ashes to ashes, dust to dust. And now you have a clear channel between you and your ancestors, your primary caregivers, those who came before. And I want you to beam that energy of love toward them, even if they have not been loving toward you. You are a queen and a queen can afford to be generous with her love a queen can afford to be generous with her forgiveness forgiveness is the most powerful healing energy there is because it is the energy of love and i want you to see now in front of you if you've experienced a primal rejection or primal abandonment from a primary caregiver, I want you to see that person in front of you. It is safe and it is safe to be safe. And I want you to know and to trust that it is not a betrayal of this person for you to shine. It is not a betrayal of this person for you to be successful. It is not a betrayal of this person for you to release your fears, for you to let go of your unhealed places, for you to release and heal your wounds, for you to reparent yourself. It is not a rejection of this person. It is not a betrayal. Even if they are here in earth form telling you or making you feel as though it is a betrayal, remember no one can make us feel anything. You are in charge. Things happen and then we create a story about it and we live a story about it. But we have the power at any point in time to free ourselves and that's what we're doing right now. And so I want you to call on the energy of forgiveness. 
I want you to welcome in the miraculous healing energy of forgiveness. We invited in the energy of miracles tonight. We said that we are asking for a miracle. We're asking for a miracle and we're asking for a healing. We're asking for a healing and we are asking for a clearing. And I want you to imagine holding hands with that person in front of you, even if it's not someone you would want to be in contact with in human form. Holding hands with that person. It's okay because you are supported by the energy of love. What they didn't give you love is now giving you. You are feeling it directly from the source. You are filled up with the energy of love. You are powerful beyond measure. You are enough. You are enough. You are enough and your best days are in front of you, not behind you. Your best days are in front of you. Amazing things are ahead for you. And none of it, none of it, your, not your glory, not your joy, not your shine, is a rejection of or an abandonment of this person who abandoned or rejected you. None of it is a betrayal of this person. They did the best that they could. Breathe. Know that you are safe and it is safe to be safe. You are safe and it is safe to be safe. And I want you to feel the energy of love as you lovingly let go of the hands of this person. Letting go of their hands doesn't remove them from your life if you are still wanting to be connected with them. It just frees you of the energetic obligation to keep living out the story that you have created for the transaction, transactional behaviors that have happened in the relationship between you two. Let go of your hands, let go of the hands. And now I want you to see in front of you very clearly the energetic ties that you have for this person. The energy may be connected as chains. It may show up as like tree trunks. It may show up as ropes. I want you to see the energetic bond that you have between you. And I want you to allow yourself to move back and allow them to move back as well. As you move back away from each other, and I want you to see that those bonds that are there, you are now able to beam your energy of love toward those bonds, towards those ties, toward whatever it is that is holding you in that energy. See yourself dissolving that energy with love. It's okay if you're not there yet. Right now, just allow yourself to be filled with love and allow that energy to gently and lovingly push that person away from you and dissolve the bond between you. Again, it does not eradicate the bond if it's someone you're still wanting to be connected to. It just frees you from any obligations that you think that you have in the relationship, any obligations that are not serving you currently in your life. And I want you to see and welcome in divine source energy. Because if we're not strong enough or we're not there yet, it's okay. Because we don't have to do it all alone. We don't have to walk it all alone. And I, and I see, oh, see the beautiful healing energy of your divine source energy your angels, your ascended masters, your ancestors. See this beautiful, positive, loving, light energy come in and easily cut the bonds, easily clear the energy, easily fill you with strength and power, easily remind you that you are enough. Breathe into the energy of enoughness. 
Breathe into the energy of feeling safe in your body. Breathe into the energy of feeling safe in your life. Affirm it, I am safe and it is safe to be safe. I am safe and it is safe to be safe. Allow yourself to be filled with love. Allow yourself to be filled with love as you lovingly allow divine source energy to separate you from all that does not serve you. Allow yourself to welcome in the power of a miracle, to know that at any point in time, we can be healed. At any point in time, we can let go. At any point in time, we are releasing. I release it. Affirm it. I let it go. I release it. I let it go. I release it. I let it go. I release it. I let it go. Take a deep breath. Let it go. In through the nose. Out through the mouth. Another deep breath. In through the nose and release it through the mouth with sound. Ah. In through the nose, out through the mouth. Ah. We ask divine source energy to bless us, to unburden us, to take up our challenges, to take up our problems, to take up our issues. As we now feel lighter, as we now feel cleared, as we now feel lovingly connected to those who came before, and we feel lovingly disconnected to those that we no longer wish to be connected to. As we lovingly release all fears, as we welcome in love, as we welcome in and are overflowing with divine source energy, know that you are not alone. We are not alone on this journey. You are just getting started. There are incredible things that you were born to do and you will do them. They may not show up in the form that you expected, but allow yourself, be vulnerable enough, open up your energy enough, be vulnerable enough to be led, and be vulnerable enough to lead. I am now vulnerable enough to be led and I am vulnerable enough to lead. You are powerful beyond measure. Allow yourself to come back into your body. Come back into your energy. Welcome in the energy of healing. Welcome in the energy of feeling safe. Welcome in the energy of knowing that you are enough. And allow the beautiful full moon energy to remove from us all that is not meant for us as we are here in this circle together.
And now I want you to allow yourself to beam. Imagine that we are all in a circle together, stretched around the globe, a global sisterhood. And there's a sister who is sitting directly across from you in this circle. And I want you to say to her, you are healed. I want you to say to her, you are enough. I want you to say to her, this is your time. I want you to affirm for her, you are beautiful. I want you to say to her, we welcome your gifts. We welcome your talents. We welcome your products. We welcome your programs. We welcome your services. We welcome your love. We welcome your love. Just breathe that in. Oh my goodness, I'm feeling like tingles right now. Oh, your energy, my loves, are so beautiful right now. Yes, Goddess Rupi. She says, I welcome in the energy of feeling safe. Goddess Leslie says that she fears growing old alone. You are not alone. You can never be alone. alone. Being alone is an optical illusion created by this fearful dimension. You're not alone now, and so there's no way that you could be alone ever. Your helpmate, your partner, your other, your Boaz is waiting for you. Allow in the miracle of clarity to see your partner who is there waiting for you. Allow in the energy of being an open and welcoming vessel for love. You are love. Think about it. Everything that we are wanting, if you're thinking, I want money, you are money. If you're thinking, I want love, you are love. Tune in now to the vibrational energy of love, of feeling loved, of feeling appreciated, of feeling safe. You are safe and it is safe to be safe. And we are calling on a miracle right now. On the new moon, we're going to call in your man. We're going to call in your money. We're going to call in your woman or whatever you are into. But right now, we ask to be separated and removed from everything that is blocking us from our divine needs, wants, gifts. Allow us to release any blockages. Allow our eyes to be clear. Allow our hearts to be clear. Allow our spirit energy to be clear. Know that we are an open channel. You can't grow old alone because first of all, you cannot grow old. Second of all, you are not alone. You are as young as you will ever be. And how amazing, what a beautiful and incredible and divine miracle that we were born in this space and time where 30 for our parents means something totally different for us. 40 for our parents means something totally different for us. 50, 60, 70, 80 for our parents' generation, something totally different for us. So there's no old for you, my love. You are as young as you will ever be, and love is yours as right now we release everything that is blocking us. We release everything, and we are divine and open channels. If it is for us, bless it. If it is not, block it. Goddess Ifetayo says, I ask to be moved away and release any and all blockages to walking in my full power and divine destiny. Let's affirm that. That is a beautiful intention. Allow us now to be moved away. 
to be moved away and release any and all blockages to us walking in our full power and divine destiny. As we inhale love, generations before us and generations after us are healed. There is a great, great, great grandmother, great, great, great grandmother's grandmother, grand grandmother, that we are not aware of who right this very minute is praying for us, is praying for our love, is praying for our abundance, is praying for our security. And there is an a descendant, whether or not you ever give birth to children or your children ever give birth to children, there is a, someone who is coming after, who right this minute is looking back at you and feeling grateful and is saying, I am so very grateful that my beautiful foremother, Goddess Aurora, Goddess Ifetayo, Goddess Tinsley, Goddess Mireille, that my beautiful foremother called in for a miracle that day that my beautiful foremother decided to release all that was no longer serving her. Yes, we release any and all blockages to us walking in our full power. Thank you, Goddess Ifetayo, and divine destiny. Goddess Anne says she's calling in her confidence. Yes, Goddess Candace, Ashe, Ashe, Ashe. And so here's what I want you to do. Here's what our homework is for the full moon circle. I want you to take a piece of paper. It can be any piece of paper. For the new moon, we're going to create a new moon journal, all right? But for the full moon, it can be any piece of paper. And on that piece of paper, I want you to write, I release. And just keep writing over and over again what it is that you release. I release fear. I release being alone. I release um, scarcity. I release... Um, anxiety. I release emotional eating. Write it all out. Write it all out, okay? And then in a way that is safe for you, if you are able to burn it, burn it. If you're not able to burn it safely, <laughs> safely, if you can't do that, then rip it up, stomp on it, and you can even spit on it, <laughs> rip it up, and throw it away. Okay, we are gonna clear it, let it go, write it out, I release. What are you releasing? I release, I release, I release. Write it out, and again, if you can safely burn it, then do so. And then take a salt bath. Salt is very clearing. That's why in the beginning they baptized in the ocean. Salt is cleansing and clearing. If you can, go and take a salt bath and clear the energy specifically around it, okay? And as follow up, I will make sure that we have specific circles where we address specifically the challenges of fear of being alone, uh, emotional eating, anxiety, fear of putting yourself out there, and some of the other things that came into light tonight. All right? Yes, Goddess Shanita says, I release guilt. Goddess Rosalind says, calling in my life purpose, healing, for all, for remo all removing all blockages for the divine. Yes, yes, my loves. So thank you, thank you, thank you so much for blessing me with your beautiful, sacred healing energy. I'm looking forward to our new moon circle in two weeks where we then are going to call in, invite in, full moon releasing, new moon, inviting in okay and you're gonna go and do your eye releases and then if you feel called to share with me tomorrow what it is that you released or you can take a picture if you want of your safe burning or ripping up or whatever it is and we'll take it from there okay all right, my goddesses, I'm so, so very glad that we had this circle together. Like I said, as I'm reopening the doors for the Spiritpreneur Guru Academy, I really needed for us to address this primal rejection that I know has blocked me in my life and blocks so many of us. And don't worry, we're just getting started. We're going to continue to dissolve it. 
All right, calling all parts of ourselves back to ourselves as the circle completes and we go back to our lives, but remembering that we are all still connected. And for this, we are so very grateful. Namaste, goddesses. Namaste. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Goddess Aurora said, didn't see Lady Annabelle. Yes, it's hard for her when I'm sitting in this solo chair. <laughs> Namaste, goddesses. <laughs>